Hey guys, I'm out of the shop tonight to take a look at the Pegasus 21 inch scroll saw, soon to be released here in the United States. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the naming of this scroll saw. Uh, the correct pronunciation of the brand is Pegasus, P E G A S. Now, the model number of this scroll saw. Uh, is a little confusing to me and keep in mind that this is a pre-shipping model uh, so there's some things that may be different that we talk about here tonight when it actually ships sometime hopefully next month. Um, on the side of the saw it says the model number is a 90.750 and it says the manufacturing number is the EX21 and on the box they call it the SC-21CE uh, so I'm not sure exactly uh, when you hear this spoken about which one of those numbers will be used but we'll figure it out later. The company that's having this saw manufactured is SCIES Miniatures out of Switzerland. Uh, they have teamed up with the manufacturer in Taiwan to produce this product. Uh, they've been selling it in Europe for a while but they are getting ready to release it here in the United States. The United States distributor for this scroll saw will be Grobeth, who is a company out of New Jersey, and they will be working with the people at Pegasus to handle all the service needs you may encounter in the future, uh, so you won't have any problem there. Uh, one of my sponsors, Bear Woods, will be uh, selling this product, and uh, it should be available on their website uh, sometime around February 28th. They are taking pre-orders now. Uh, so you can visit their, their site at www.bearwood.com and sign up for one of the pre-orders. It's my understanding that the first shipment into the United States of these machines is going to be pretty limited. Uh, so if this is something you're interested in purchasing and you want to get it pretty soon, you want to go on over and sign up for the pre-order uh, because I'm pretty certain they're going to sell out quickly. Uh, so jump on over to Bearwood, get your pre-order set, and that way you'll be good to go when the, when the ship lands here in the United States. As a consumer, it's always nice to have choices in the marketplace. And the Pegasus 21 inch scroll saw is just going to give you another option when you start to look for an upgraded scroll saw or maybe to jump into your first scroll saw. Uh, so I welcome Pegasus into our market. Uh, I welcome the competition uh, for all the other companies because competition drives quality and often better prices for the consumer. Let's talk about the features, the standard features of this scroll saw first. We'll get those out of the way, then we'll talk about a couple of the uh, features that might be a little different from the other saws on the market, uh, and then we'll do a little bit of a demonstration. To start out with, let's start out with the fact that this is a 21 inch scroll saw, and what that means is the distance from the back of the throat of the scroll saw to the blade right here is 21 inches. So you have a 21 inch depth of cut potential. All right. The table itself is 23 and a half inches deep and 13 and a half inches wide at its widest part. The distance in front of the blade on this saw is about four, let's see, about four and a quarter inches in front, uh, which is shorter than some of the older machines like the DeWalt, but very similar to the Excalibur uh, and um, the jet scroll saw. The table itself, as you can see, is black. It appears to be a powder coating. Uh, looks and feels very durable. The surface is very smooth. I did a simple scratch test on the bottom of the table and it was very difficult to scratch, so that looks like a positive. Don't have any hours on this saw, so I can't tell you the overall durability of the table, uh, but my first impression of it is very good. It feels like it's well made. The hole in the table for the blade to go through is three quarters of an inch deep and about a quarter of an inch wide, uh, which is perfect. You don't want this hole to be any bigger than is absolutely necessary because you don't want the small pieces when you're cutting intricate fretwork to fall down through the hole and get lost. Or even if it's waste material, it's better to keep it on top of the table. Surrounding the blade entry hole are a series of holes drilled into the table. These are for the built-in uh, dust collection on this saw, and uh, when we get a chance, we'll get down underneath the saw and you can take a look at that. Uh, but this is a feature that a lot of people are really going to appreciate having, uh, and in my limited testing so far, it seems to be very efficient. Moving on to the upper arm, the 
Pegasus 21 inch scroll saw does come standard with the safety feature of the hold down foot, uh, fully adjustable up and down. This is an option that you will often see removed from scroll saws. Uh, you will see later on when we start cutting on this machine that I will also remove it. It is a safety feature. It does help hold the board down to the table to keep it from bouncing and possibly uh, giving you a blister on your finger, pinching your finger. Um, the scroll saw is so safe that once you have a little bit of experience on it, in my personal opinion, it's fine to remove this. Uh, it does also prevent your fingers from getting too close to the blade, uh, but a lot of times you have to. You need to get in there close to hold the piece on small, fine fretwork. Uh, so once you're comfortable with the machine, use your best judgment on whether you use the hold down or not. On the top of the head, right above uh, the blade clamps, we've got the variable speed, so it's up front easy to access. Um, this is where you want all your controls. You want your controls up front so you have easy quick access to all of them. The on off switch is located right in front of the variable speed knob. Uh, most full time scrollers will leave the on off switch turned on permanently and will use a foot switch to control the saw. That's what I do with all my scroll saws and I highly recommend it. You'll see that the on-off switch itself is covered with a plastic membrane. This is to keep uh, dust from getting in there and uh, contaminating the contacts. Very nice feature. While we're talking about the upper arm, I'm going to talk about a feature that's unique to this style of scroll saw. Not necessarily this machine, but this style. And that is the fact that the blade movement front to back is actually adjustable and that allows you to adjust it to be a more aggressive cutting scroll saw or uh, better for cutting fine detail. Most scroll saws, when this blade travels up and down, it does not go in an up, a straight up and down motion. It actually travels upon an arc, okay, like this. This machine allows you to adjust that arc down to where it's a shallower arc so it takes less of a bite on each pass. To do that, You've got this motor back here that has a flange on it with some adjustable screws and you've got this knob back here. Now the reason why I mention this, and this is a little bit of an advanced detail, but I want to talk about it just real quick because people get confused about this knob. On some of the older scroll saws, this knob back here was how you actually adjusted the tension of the blade. On the Pegasus scroll saw, you actually have the quick adjuster right here to where when you do this, that's what puts the tension back on the blade. Okay, similar to some of the other machines you've seen. The way you use this knob back here is you use it to adjust the bottom of this top arm to be parallel with the table. And that sets you in kind of a general area to where you've got a certain amount of arc on the blade. If you want to do finer detail and you want to have less arc of the blade, you can adjust this knob and then if you need more adjustment you can adjust this motor. I only talk about that not to tell you how to do it because that's a whole other video in itself, but I tell you that just so you understand that this scroll saw has the ability to do extremely fine detail. While we're still up here on the top of the machine, let me go back to the variable speed control here just for one second. Uh, the variable speed on this machine is from 400 strokes per minute up to 1550 strokes per minute. So that gives you all the range you need to cut your thinnest materials up to your thickest materials. If you need to slow down to cut plastic or uh, thin wood, you can do that. You can go down slower than you'll probably ever need. And up to 1550 is plenty fast enough to cut even the thickest and most dense woods. This machine, as it goes through its variable speed, has very minimal vibration. Let me turn it all the way down to 400. And you can see that's really, really slow. Uh, very few times will you need that type of speed. But you can see, obviously, at this speed, there's zero vibration. Most scroll saws, as you turn the, the variable speed up, you will find a sweet spot where you'll slowly uh, increase the amount of vibration. You'll get to the point where it stabilizes, and then maybe if you go above that, you'll start to vibrate a little bit more again. Uh, this machine is just as smooth as it can be, up to about 95%. That's where the vibration starts to increase just a little bit, but it's still very minimal. And there's up to 100%, and we're talking minimal vibration. All scroll saws have some vibration, but this one seems to be tuned really well. It does a really nice job. The Pegasus 21-inch scroll saw comes standard with an air blower. 
Uh, if you've ever done any scroll sawing in, the, in your past, you'll know that an air blow is, a blower is just absolutely critical. They do give you just enough holes that you can kind of get the hose pointed from the front, blowing the dust to the back. Uh, that's a really nice feature because you really are better off getting it away from you than pushing the dust towards you. You'll find some scroll saws where the air blower won't get any farther than say up to here and it literally blows the dust right back up in your face or on your lap. So it's nice that they give you plenty of extra links to get around here to blow the dust away from you. One more just quick tip while we're here on these air blowers. Uh, occasionally you will have one of these little ducts right here break or the, often it's the very first one in the chain that will break. Uh, these are difficult to replace if you don't know how to do it. So if you ever break one of these, uh, shoot me an email and I'll tell you the easy way to get them off and back on. Moving on down to the base of the scroll saw, you can see that the side of the saw, the body of it, has these holes in it. They allow you to store your tubes of scroll saw blades in there. Uh, you'll see here that I'm using the Pegasus scroll saw blades which while we're talking about them, I really like these blades. I think they're one of, if not the best, scroll saw blade on the market. Again, one of my sponsors, Bear Woods, sells these blades. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, check those out. Really good blades. This model that I received did come with a sample pack of Pegasus scroll saw blades. Um, this is one of those situations where most entry-level saws come with blades that are unusable. In this case, these are fine blades, and uh, they came with this machine. This is a pre-shipping model of this, as I mentioned earlier, so I don't know that your saw will come with these blades. This one did. I hope that's a feature that they're going to include for everybody. Uh, because once you try a really good blade, if you've been using a lesser quality blade in the past, uh, you'll quickly realize that it's, it's, it's worth the effort to go out and find a good set of blades. They're no more expensive than a cheap blade, so there's no reason not to buy them. Got the front of the saw jacked up here so I can give you a better view underneath here of the controls for the tilt and the dust collection. We'll talk about the tilt controls first. Uh, it's a rack and pinion system. Uh, this is what they call a tilting head scroll saw. Uh, some of the older saws or some of the less expensive saws sold today, when you get ready to uh, cut at an angle, you actually will tilt the table left or right. What they've done on these tilting head scroll saws is when you release the tension and you start moving the rack and pinion, you can see up here that the head moves and not the table. And what makes that such a nice feature is because your piece that you're cutting remains flat, so you're not having to hold it on the table or having the potential of it sliding off. So it's always convenient to have the table stay flat and set your angle by adjusting the angle of the blade. Like I said, it is a rack and pinion. You've got a locking lever. You unlock it. You grab the knob and you turn it to the desired angle. It has a little push button here that allows you to get back to the standard position. There, when I'm pushing in the net, it locked in and that's my zero degrees. I can tighten the clamp back down and I'm back at zero. Uh, if I want to move to some of the other designated angles, same thing. I just turn it uh, until I get that click and it's good to go. The Pegasus 21 inch scroll saw is capable of a full 45 degree left and a full 45 degree right tilt. Uh, I very seldom have ever used that extreme of a tilt on a scroll saw, uh, but if you need it, it's here. If you do a lot of uh, making of uh, scroll saw bowls, uh, you'll know that that is a pretty handy feature. The body below the table of the scroll saw is a very thick metal, uh, very sturdy. Uh, it's going to take a tank to beat this thing up, so no problems at all there. Each of the feet of the scroll saw has a hole in it where you can attach it to a stand uh, with bolts. The machine, uh, I did not get the stand with it because like I said, this is a pre-shipping model, uh, so I didn't have a stand available. Uh, but you, the stand will be available on Bear Woods' site uh, once this is ready to sell. And uh, if you can afford it, I recommend it. The stands are built very well, and they are designed to help keep the vibration of the saw to a minimum. Uh, so unless you want to build your own stand, uh, I recommend that you buy the one that it's made for this saw. I've really got this saw jacked up in the air now, so I'm going to do this kind of quick because I've got it kind of precariously uh, perched here on this block. Um, one thing that I was not expecting, uh, and at first I didn't even know what it was, uh, when I first turned this saw on, it made 
a noise that I wasn't expecting to hear. And it was obviously a noise that was not normal. What it was is underneath the table, right here, there's a plastic membrane. And the first time you start it up, the hole in that membrane that the saw blade goes through is fairly small. So when you turn it on, it starts to cut that membrane. And I thought it was packing material at first, and I started to reach down there and take it off, and then I realized that's not what it was. What this membrane is, is it's a dust port that moves the dust that goes through those holes that I showed you in the top of the table over to this dust extraction port that you can hook up to your shop vac or your dust collector. Uh, so I've not seen this on other scroll saws. If it's there, I just have never noticed it, but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not on any of the other machines I've ever worked with. Uh, so this is kind of a unique feature, and I wasn't certain how well it was going to work, uh, but in my dust tests that I did, which were you know, pretty limited to this point, but still enough that I think I've got a pretty good handle on it, the dust extraction off of the, the dust that comes underneath the table is very efficient. Uh, it's not 100% maybe, but it's pretty darn close to it. The only thing I don't know is that over a period of time, if this little plastic membrane, if that hole begins to get larger, uh, how much dust will fall fall through that hole. My expectation is that that will be a limited problem because there's enough suction coming through here that I think once the dust gets down through the holes in the table, it's going to it's going to draw it away from this little hole that the blade makes and I don't think it'll be a problem. Uh, I don't know that yet because I haven't had a chance to have this machine long enough to know for sure, but that's just my expectation. So your dust port is right here, uh, very handy. I personally don't use dust collection on a scroll saw, and I've stated this before, but it's noisy. Uh, and uh, the scroll saw is a little bit of a unique tool when it comes to dust collection because when I've got my table saw turned on or my planer or any of the other machines in my shop, I only have them on for a couple minutes at a time, and then I stop them and the dust collection goes off and the noise goes away. I often sit in front of a scroll saw for four, five, six hours at a stretch. And having that shop back or even the more quiet dust collection systems that I have running for that period of time, to me, is just harsh. Uh, so I, I hate wearing earmuffs the whole time I'm on the scroll saw, so I generally don't use dust collection. I just am my own dust collector. When I get done cutting, I vacuum it up. I keep a small attache vacuum cleaner next to the saw, and every several minutes I'll grab it and just pick up the dust that's accumulated on top of the table, or often I'll just sweep it off into the floor and then vacuum it up later. But the dust control on this machine for a lot of people is going to be a very important feature, and this looks top-notch from what I've seen so far. A couple other things to mention about this saw is that it is a double parallel link design. Won't go into the details of that. You can look it up on on Google if you need to. Uh, but the design is is implemented to reduce the amount of vibration that travels through the saw uh, from the heads. Very effective. Several machines on the market use it and it's a very good system. There's one feature on a scroll saw that when uh, some of my readers come to me and ask me for suggestions on a scroll saw to buy, one of the first things that I want them to try to look for is a scroll saw that makes changing the blades quick and easy. Um, that's probably my number one feature that I look for in a saw uh, because you're removing the blade and placing it back through a new entry hole so many times on a project that if this is cumbersome it really gets old and it's frustrating to uh, do some detailed fret work uh, with a saw that requires a tool or makes it just cumbersome to replace the blade or to not necessarily replace the blade but to take the blade out and feed it through another hole. The Pegasus 21 inch scroll saw has pretty much the best of all worlds when it comes to that. Uh, it has the quick release lever, which is very nice, a reasonably comfortable thumb screw that lets you remove the blade from the top chuck or the bottom chuck, depending on whether you're a top feeder or a bottom feeder. The upper arm raises up and stays up in the up position without any additional help. There is an adjustment screw on the side to adjust the pressure of how hard this table, this upper arm is to move up and down. Out of the box, this one's just maybe a little bit stiff. I like it a little bit stiffer because it stays up better, uh, but you can adjust that to be a little lighter throw if you want. So we've got the quick release of the tension, 
the thumb screw to release the blade from the chuck. Now let's talk about the chucks themselves because that's kind of a special feature on this saw. Several months ago, Pegas introduced these chucks uh, to the scroll saw world and they introduced them as replacement chucks for several different scroll saws. You could put them on the Excalibur, uh, you could even put them on the Jet and the DeWalt. Uh, just about any scroll saw of this design could uh, the chucks could be replaced with these. They designed these chucks intentionally to per, to reduce the amount of vibration, to extend the life of the scroll saw because less vibration equals less wear on the bearings, and also make the blades easier and more efficient uh, to put into the chucks themselves. Now I did a complete review on these chucks when they came out and some of those claims I was able to substantiate and some of them maybe less so. All the claims make perfect sense to me because these chucks are uh, considerably lighter than the standard chucks. The, the depth of the front of the chuck to where the blade clamps in is very shallow so it makes it easy to get that blade in there. And of course reduced vibration from reduced weight over a period of time it makes perfect sense that it would increase the life of the bearings in the saw. And the bearings in these scroll saws, they do have the tendency to wear out over time, just like any moving part. So, in theory, uh, I think the design is a very good idea. I think it has the potential to increase the life of your saw. I just can't personally prove those facts, uh, although I do believe them. I was less convinced that it was easier to put the blade in at first than I am now. I've used this on two or three of my scroll saws and over a period of time I've become to be a believer that it is easier to get the blades chucked up in these and keep them in there uh, without as many problems as some of the other chucks. Now again that's not, you know, the other chucks work fine, these are just a little bit better. Uh, so if you're interested in these chucks for the scroll saw you have currently, again, you can go to Bear Woods' website and uh, find these for all the saws they're designed for. But, obviously, when Pegas introduced their scroll saw, they put their chucks on it. Uh, and, and they are very nice. Uh, if you've used entry-level scroll saws and found replacing the blades or swapping uh, or taking the blade out of the chuck for a new entry hole, you're going to fall in love with this saw because Changing the blades is as easy as it's going to get. One last thing I want to talk about, and it may or may not be important to you, but I really like it, and that's the color scheme of this scroll saw. It's a very attractive looking tool. Now, again, the way a tool looks is probably not as important as how it works, but if a tool works good like this one does, and it's well built like this one is, it's really nice to have something that makes your shop look better. And uh, maybe it's just me, but I really like the red and black look of this scroll saw. It looks great. You remember when we were showing up underneath the saw, I talked about the holes in the table and the dust collection and the plastic membrane that was under there. I just want to do a quick demonstration to show you that noise it makes. And uh, I'm going to talk to the manufacturer and see uh, if there's any expectations on this, but just listen to this here for a second. I'm going to start the foot switch and you're going to hear the noise uh, once the blade is running. That's the noise of the machine running. I'm going to reach under the table with my hand and I'm going to touch that membrane. And what I'm doing is I'm moving the membrane up to where the blade's not touching it. So at this point the blade is just slightly rubbing on that membrane. And there is a little bit of a noise there. I don't think that's a problem, but it's something that's just different than I've seen before. Uh, so it's something I wanted to bring to your attention. The next thing I want to do here on the review is talk about the dust collection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple minutes worth of cut. And I'll stop the video here through most of this so you don't have to watch me cut. But I'm going to cut for a couple minutes, let the dust build up. We'll see what it looks like. We'll clean it up. Then we'll do the same test again. Uh, with the shop back hooked up to it. We'll just see how the dust collection works. Here's without the dust collection. We'll just get started. Here. Okay, there's about a minute and a half to two minutes worth of cutting in this one quarter inch Baltic burst plywood. Uh, zoom in here real close, try to give you a good look at the top of the table. Uh, and also the top of the board. 
try to get I'll try to get the uh, camera down underneath to where you can see the dust that's underneath the table. Then we'll clean it all up and we'll do the test with test again with the dust collector. Here's a tight zoomed in look at the top of the table. I'm going to hold up a little bit of a light shield here just to make sure that the reflection isn't hurting the view of the dust. So there I'm trying to shield the light. You can see the dust that we have on top of the table and the dust that's still on top of the board. I'm going to release the blade, take the board off so you can get a better look at the dust on the table. I'll add the dust from the board onto the table. That little pile right there is what was left on top of the wood. Now let's see if I can get you down underneath to see the dust underneath the table. Here's a pretty good look underneath the table. You can see we have dust here on the locking lever. We have dust on the front of the bench right here. That's all the dust that came through the membrane, uh, fell off the edge of the table, however it got down there. That's the dust underneath the table. I'm going to take my shot back, clean all this mess up, and then we'll try it again with dust collection. I'm ready to start the dust collection test again with the dust collector hooked up. One thing I had to do to get the dust collector attached to the port was to move the saw forward. So because of that, the dust that falls through wasn't going to land on my workbench. So I've installed this board here underneath it to catch that dust so we'll still be able to see it. Uh, so in all fairness, I wanted you to see what I changed here. Got my dust collector hooked up, my shot back in this case. Going to do the same test, about a minute and a half to two minutes. Then I'll come back and show you the results. Okay, went about a minute and a half, two minutes again. Uh, exact same thing, only this time with the dust collection turned on. Now keep in mind that dust collection, standard dust collection built into these machines is primarily to catch the dust that falls underneath the scroll saw. Uh, so first let's take a look at what it did on top of the scroll saw. You can see that we have a reduced amount of dust on top of the table. We still have some dust, but remove, reduced amount. We've got dust on the board. You, know, do that. you can see it's basically the same as it was before the dust collection as far as what remains on top of the, the board. This dust, now of course if you turn the vacuum cleaner back on and move this dust over towards the hole, it will clean off the top of the table for you. Uh, or you can just vacuum it up with a hand back or however you take care of it. The bigger test for uh, dust collection on a scroll saw is what happens underneath. That's the dust that of course falls onto your floor and into your lap and makes the biggest mess that's the hardest to clean up. You can see the dust here on top relatively easy to clean up. Let's take a look underneath. Here's underneath the saw. You can see, remember all the dust we had here on the release handle? There's zero dust here. There is zero dust on this board. This saw collected, or this dust collection, probably collected 95% of the dust that would normally have fallen down uh, onto your lap or into the floor. So, uh, very effective under table dust collection, reasonably effective above table dust collection. I think that's a pretty extensive review. This saw, or this style of saw, has been on the market for several years, so we already knew coming into it uh, that it was going to be a good machine because uh, the company or the manufacturer in Taiwan who builds these machines uh, has built the other machines also, and they've all been good machines. That particular manufacturer does an excellent job with quality control. They, you know, like any machine, you can occasionally get a bad machine out of the box and have to return it, but their rejection rate is very small, and uh, the quality of the build of this machine is just as good as any of those other machines, if not better in some cases. Uh, so, n another great job by that company uh, that manufactures these machines in Taiwan. I'm not a big fan of unboxing, so I didn't go through and show you the packaging and everything. Uh, if I can, I'll try to get a picture of the packaging and put it over there uh, so you can see it. Uh, the machine did come packaged in a box that was very well done. Lots of styrofoam. Uh, it came bolted down to this piece of hardboard that uh, was exactly the size of the box, which is uh, done to keep the salt from moving around during shipping. Uh, there was no damage, zero damage to the... Uh, 
to the machine at all when I received it, not even a scratch. So packaging, first class, done really well. As I've mentioned a couple times, this is a pre-shipping unit, uh, so what came in my box may not be exactly what you see in your box when it ships. Uh, I did not get a manual with this machine, which is not surprising. That's fairly common when you get these tools uh, sent to you before they're actually released to the market. It, it may not have just been ready for printing yet. But uh, anyway, so I can't give you the details on the manual as far as uh, the quality of it. Uh, but I'm fairly confident the quality is going to be good there because uh, it's like I say, it's a standard design, it's a design that we're used to, and it's not like they're starting from scratch. So I, I would anticipate that the manual's fine. If I can get a copy of one, I'll show you later. I also mentioned earlier that this machine was distributed by Grobe out of, uh, I think it's, uh, let's see here, Karlstadt, New Jersey. Uh, if you want to contact them, they are www.grobetusa.com. Uh, I'm sure they can help answer any questions you might have. Uh, the reseller of this saw is going to be Bear Woods, B E A R W O O D. That's with no S. I always pronounce it Bear Woods, but it's actually bearwood.com. Uh, and Stephen over there, I'm sure, can answer any of your. Uh, questions for setting up for the pre-order for this machine, uh, don't hesitate to contact him. Uh, the telephone number for Grobe is 1-800-847-4188. And I'm sure, again, they'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. I'm going to wrap up this review just by giving you a, a, a brief synopsis of my opinion of this saw and uh, whether I think it's value for the money. Um, I knew going into it, like I've said a couple times already, that this was going to be a quality saw. I know the manufacturer, I know the distributor, I know the reseller, um, and they've always, all three of them, produced quality and given quality service to their customers. So no hesitation recommending any of these uh, partners in this saw. Uh, they all do a good job and they will take care of and stand behind the products they sell. So I'm comfortable with that. The saw itself, um, very good saw. I mean, if you especially are coming from an entry level scroll saw and moving up to a higher quality machine, you're going to fall in love with this the first time you sit down in front of it because it's, it's just a dream to cut with. Um, if you're moving from another machine in this quality range, uh, you're going to get what you expect. You're going to expect quality. Uh, well built and that's what you're going to get with this machine. Again, we know that because we know the manufacturer. They've done it before and they've done it again. Very nice machine. Uh, I, I recommend it highly. N not much more than I can say. It's a good machine. I know this was an extremely long video, but these reviews of the scroll saws are some of the most important things that I put out there and I want to try to be as efficient as I possibly can with these reviews because you're going to spend a lot of money on this machine. You're going to spend a lot of money on any of these machines and you want to know what to expect when you put your money down. Uh, and that's why I tend to make these reviews so long is because I do want to get into the detail of it. Now there are still things we can talk about about this saw. Uh, there's details I didn't go over, but uh, we'd be here all night. So if you have questions, feel free to email me. Uh, you can find my email address on my blog, uh, which is www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. The link is in the description below. Feel free to go there, click on the email me link, and send me an email. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. Stay pretty swamped, uh, so it might be a little slow, but I'll do my best. So shoot me the email, and I'm happy to try to help. Likewise, Stephen over at Bear Woods, uh, more than happy to answer your questions. Okay, that's going to be it. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me at the Scroll Saw Workshop. Catch you next time.